Morgan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 17 of season 5 of Riverdale, chapter 93, Dance of Death. Now, if you haven't seen the episode, there will be spoilers in this review, so stop watching if you don't want to be spoiled. With that said, here's my review of episode 17 of season 5 of Riverdale, chapter 93, Dance of Death. Tabitha had a good point when she told Betty that 10 days with no murders is a win for her, but I also understood why Betty said that when a serial killer is quiet, that's when you should be worried. I mean, if murders are happening and then they just stop, people would be on edge if the killer wasn't caught. And yes, they did catch one killer, but Betty was sure that there were more, and she was right. I already hated Chad, but it was really annoying when he told Veronica that he wanted everything when they were negotiating the terms of their divorce. And it was also annoying when Hiram told Chad that the only way Chad would be able to stay with Veronica is if he got Archie out of the way. And in order to help him do that, Hiram gave Chad a gun. But luckily, when Chad tried to shoot Archie, he wasn't successful. And after finding out, Veronica told Chad that she wanted everything, and if he wouldn't give her everything, she would press charges. I understood why Kevin was questioning Cheryl, but the fact that Penelope was putting doubt into Kevin's head should have made him suspicious, since Penelope would obviously want Kevin to doubt Cheryl, and you would think that Kevin would know that. And Penelope's plan worked since Kevin told Cheryl that he was leaving the ministry. I'm wondering what Penelope will do next in order to make the rest of the members of the ministry doubt Cheryl. It was really sweet to see Tony give Britta advice when she told Tony that she was gay. But it was also really sad when Tony told Fangs that she was with Britta when Britta came out to her parents and that her parents didn't react well. But it was nice when Tony and Fangs said that they would support their son Anthony no matter what. After Tabitha found out that her friend Squeaky was missing, I thought it was a good idea when she asked Betty and Jughead to help find out what happened, since she knew that they were good at that kind of thing. And I was also really glad that they finally realized that Squeaky was missing, since she had disappeared in the first episode of The Time Jump, and I was waiting for someone to realize that. I felt really sorry for Alice when she was giving her news report and asked the Lonely Highway Killer to stop killing people, and when she said that she was hoping that the body that was found that was disfigured was Polly so she would be able to get some closure. I really wanted Betty and Alice to find out what really happened to Polly, and in this episode, they finally did. When Hiram rigged the Blossom's mind to explode in order to try and get Archie out of the way, it was obviously upsetting, but it also made me wonder how Hiram did that. 
I mean, he would have had to have gone to the mines to rig it, so you would think that someone would have seen him. And I also didn't blame Veronica when she told Hiram that if Archie died, then Hiram would die. I mean, after everything that Hiram's put Veronica through, he had that coming. I had a feeling that the Lonely Highway Killer and the Mothman storylines would come together, and that was proven in this episode when Lerman told Betty, Jughead, and Tabitha about the room that he was held in, which matched the description of the room that Polly said she was in, and when he said that a Mothman helped him escape and told him that if he told anyone, they would come after him. It's always creative when two storylines that at first have nothing to do with each other can come together. It was definitely a twist when Betty was told that her DNA matched the DNA of the trucker that she had held captive and who later killed himself. So when Nana Rose told Betty and Jughead that the Mothman story was just a cover to hide illegitimate blossoms that were in hiding, the DNA matching made sense. And you could also tell that Betty and Jughead felt horrible when they realized that Old Man Dreyfus, who was the person who had told Jughead about the Mothman, was involved in the Lonely Highway murders. Since that could have meant that Polly could have been at that house while they were there, and they had no idea. It was really heartwarming to see Archie imagining the soldiers in his platoon helping him and Eric get out of the mines. Sure, Cheryl believed that she got Archie and Eric out of the mines by praying to the elements, but whatever saved them, the important thing is that they were saved. I am curious to find out what's going on with Cheryl, since while she was praying to the elements, the leaves on the trees were blowing in the wind. It would be cool if this was a connection to the chilling adventures of Sabrina, but I don't know. The music that was playing when Veronica and Chad were fighting after Chad broke into the Pembroke was corny, but at least now we don't have to worry about Chad anymore since Veronica killed him. But I don't think that Veronica will get charged for it since Chad broke in and Veronica had to use self-defense. But this is Riverdale, so there's always a chance that Veronica could get in trouble. When Jughead was talking to Old Man Dreyfus, I was worried that something bad was going to happen while Betty, Tabitha, Tony, and Fangs were looking for Britta. And people in Mothman outfits did come after them, but they were able to get away from them, and Britta was saved. The only question I have is, since Tony told Betty that not all of the brothers were evil, and that one had helped Britta, why didn't he turn in his brothers in the first place? I mean, he obviously knew what they were doing was wrong since he helped Lerman and Britta, but for some reason he didn't tell anyone that he knew who was behind the murders. This whole time I've been saying that I still believed that Polly was alive since they hadn't found her body, and if there's one thing I know about Riverdale, you shouldn't believe that someone's dead unless there's a body. But in this episode, Betty and Alice finally found Polly's body, and based on their reaction, they could tell that it really was Polly, which was really sad, but 
at least now they have closure. Thanks for watching, guys! If you saw the episode, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. And if you want to see any of my previous Riverdale reviews, check out the playlist. And if you want to see any of my future videos, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!